We do have another story for you tonight, though, which is about the fact that we have seen a great deal of footage from the January 6th riot at the Capitol, which was more than two years ago. We have, however, seen only a portion of that footage. The portion that we've seen is the portion that the January 6th committee chose to show us. The portion that we have not seen is the portion that that January 6th committee chose to conceal from us. And I don't think anyone here needs a reminder that the January 6th committee was completely united in their political and ideological crusade. The only Republicans on that committee were Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney, both of whom were even more devoted to destroying Trump and sabotaging his movement than the, Repu the Democrats on that committee were. That's why they were on that committee. Remember, Nancy Pelosi rejected two of Kevin McCarthy's nominees to be on the committee, and that had never happened in the history of the House before, which is why he said, I'm not going to nominate any Republicans. And so Nancy Pelosi handpicked her two favorite. It was a totally partisan committee that was united in every way in their single-minded effort, and they chose for you which clips you got to see and which clips you didn't. And people have been rightly wanting to see the full surveillance footage of January 6th so that we can know whether what has been shown to us is representative of what happened or whether what has been concealed tells another part of the story that has not yet been told. Kevin McCarthy, the Speaker of the House, who is in control of this footage now, has decided to give it to a news organization, Fox News, and specifically to Tucker Carlson. So here is the AP report on that. Before we get to the reaction, here's exactly what happened. Quote, thousands of hours of surveillance footage from the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol are being made available to Fox News Channel host Tucker Carlson. A stunning level of access granted by House Speaker Kevin McCarthy that Democrats swiftly condemned as a grave breach of security with potentially far-reaching consequences. The hard right political commentator, not a journalist, he's the hard right political commentator, said his team is spending the week at the Capitol pouring through the video and preparing to reveal their findings to his viewers, but granting exclusive access to sensitive January 6th security footage to such a deeply partisan figure is a highly unusual move, seen by some critics as essentially outsourcing House oversight to a TV personality who has promoted conspiracy theories about the attack. Quote, it's a shocking development that brings in both political concerns, but even more importantly, security concerns, said Representative Dan Goldman, Democrat of New York. He was the heir to a billionaire family fortune who was just elected by the very liberal Democrats in Manhattan. He was also the chief counsel during President Donald Trump's first impeachment trial, so you know he's super nonpartisan and objective. Quote, unfortunately, the apparent disclosure of sensitive video material is yet another example of the grave threat to the security of the American people represented by the extreme MAGA Republican majority. Hakeem Jeffries, Democrat of New York, the current House Minority Leader said in a letter to House colleagues. That's from AP. That's their idea of a neutral, objective news story trying to tell you what happened. It sounds like a press release from the Democratic National Committee. Now, that what we have here is a politician, Kevin McCarthy, handpicking a journalist to provide material to is exactly what has already happened. As I said, the January 6th committee is already a politicized, highly partisan body that handpicked what they wanted you to see and kept the rest from you. Now, Tucker Carlson, who has a different perspective, is going to go into that surveillance footage and find out what was hidden from you to see if there's anything there that negates the narrative of the January 6th committee and provides new insight into what actually happened on that day. You would think the media would be happy about this because this is an opportunity for more transparency to see footage of a very important event or at least one they think is very important, the insurrection, that we have not seen. We're about to shine light on things that have been kept in darkness. And how does the media feel about that? We know here from The Hill reminding us the Washington Post actually changed its motto. They adopted a new motto just for the Trump era. They still have it, though. It's called Democracy Dies in Darkness. Quote, the Washington Post has a new slogan on its homepage, Democracy Dies in Darkness. The motto, one that has been used periodically in the past by Washington Post columnist and editor Bob Woodward, was first spotted on Friday. This must mean that the media is celebrating this huge amount of transparency we're about to get and finally seeing a bunch of footage that a partisan body kept from us as it showed us what it wanted to see. Is that correct? Let's take a look at the video of how the media has reacted here. Uh, let's start with... Uh, what is going on at um, and, and, and MSNBC and NBC. Here is the always sober and insightful 
NBC host Joy Reid interviewing Congressman Jamie Raskin, who is a Democrat. He is also a member of the January 6th committee. So remember, the person you're about to see, the politician you're about to see, was already part of the body that handpicked surveillance footage and showed it to you while keeping the rest. Listen to what he says in his reaction to this news. Great. Is there... Is, is, are we in danger of not just that, of people, of them trying to twist this footage, cut little pieces of it that they think will help criminals get out of jail or get out of trouble, but also I'm concerned that, that these are the people that the Russians listen to, including yeah. Tucker, that he can put on something that is false, not real, but that is very useful to our enemies, including knowing where the security cameras are on Capitol Hill. Well, it, there seems to be some fish life consuming the right part of Joy Reid's body, but let's ignore that. I think one of the things I want to focus on instead is do you notice how they cannot discuss any kind of political debate without instantly invoking the Russians? Tucker's going to show the Russians where the security footage is, and then what, the Russians are going to go and invade the capital? Is that what's going to happen? We, we already have seen so much of this surveillance footage that shows where the cameras are and shows so much of where everything else is. And instead of questioning the journalistic aspect, which I think is valid, why should one journalist get this and not have it released to the public at large, which I'll get to in a second, instead she immediately goes to, this is who Russia listens to. It's a national security threat to allow Tucker Carlson instead of Liz Cheney to pick and choose which video footage you get to see and which you don't get to see. And here's how Jamie Raskin responded. Well, look, Tucker Carlson is a pro-Putin, pro-Orban, pro-autocrat propagandist. So while we've got the president of the United States over in Ukraine expressing solidarity with the forces of democratic freedom, Kevin McCarthy is releasing these tapes to one network, not making it public for everybody, not giving it to CNN and MSNBC and the New York Times, Washington Post, giving it to Fox News and to Tucker Carlson so he can forward his propaganda theories. Okay, so he at least, aside from also invoking the scary boogeyman of Vladimir Putin, which is all that occupies these people's minds, and I guess I should also say I think a major reason for Democratic Party unanimous support for the war in Ukraine is really because they want to punish Putin for their perceived, for the perceived role they, they think he played in helping Hillary Clinton lose the 2016 election to Donald Trump. That's why Russia is still at the forefront of their mind with regard to everything. But he's also voicing this journalistic critique that why should one network get this information? Why shouldn't we all get it? That is something that we're hearing a lot of. Here is uh, Frank Figluzzi, who used to be the associate director of the FBI in like pretty much every single former operative, senior operative of the U.S. security state, he now for some reason is employed by corporate media outlets. They just bring on, here's, here's our colleague from the CIA, here's our colleague from the NSA, here's our colleague from the FBI. And he came on to this show, it's called The 11th Hour by this, I forget her name, uh, Stephanie something. No one watches, but we're going to show it to you anyway. Stephanie Rule. I think, and here are, is them discussing the fact that Kevin McCarthy has chosen to give this material to Fox News. Frank, people could find this move on McCarthy's part unscrupulous, dangerous, disgusting, terrible. But is it legal? Because he doesn't care what our opinions are. Yeah, he's the speaker. He made this call all by himself, apparently. We don't know what transpired between him and Tucker Carlson, why he chose Tucker, for example. But it's done. So now we have to live with the ramifications. What are the ramifications? From where I look at this, there's legit security concerns. What are they? For example, we have seen video clips from January. Do you think it's weird, by the way, that a news network, when it comes time to question somebody about what media outlets should report and how journalists should report them, calls on to the television to tell you about this? The former senior official from the FBI, do you, do you think the FBI and its senior operatives should be opining, should be arbitrating what is and is not legitimately reported by a journalist and how journalism should be conducted. I don't. And yet that's the person they, that these are the people they always bring on to opine on all of this. They are completely aligned with, completely allied with and in bed with 
the entire superstructure of the U.S. security state. They don't only bring them on to talk about the FBI or the CIA or the Pentagon or things that are at least within the ambit of their arguable expertise. These are the people who shape the news. They go right from the CIA and the FBI and the NSA and the Pentagon and the Justice Department right into the largest media corporations in the world. As I pointed out before, in the Cold War, they used to have to do this clandestinely. That's one of the things that was shocking the church committee uncovered was how they were shaping and influencing the news. Now they do it out in the open. So now they have him on saying that Tucker Carlson's reporting on what you've already seen, January 6th surveillance footage, hours and hours of it, is a national security threat because of what he might choose to show you that they didn't choose to show you. Six, where we see Nancy Pelosi being escorted off the floor of Congress, and then the next shot we see, and only the next shot we see, is video of her in a safe room, right? We don't see her being transited through a particular pathway. We don't see the entrance to the safe room. We don't know where that is. Those are the kinds of things, code words with Capitol Police officers on strategy, tactics, who's where, camera angles that show hidden cameras within the Capitol building. All of that could be exposed in the, if it's done irresponsibly without a security view, review, and I think that's what we're dealing with here. That's what concerns me. So basically what's going to happen is Tucker Carlson's going to get the security footage and he's going to look for the part that shows where the safe room is. And then he's going to go on air and he's going to draw a map for the Russians, for Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin. He's going to show the Kremlin where the safe room is. And this is why you should be scared. This is, leave aside the, the whole thing about Russia and the thing about how they're going to find out the security footage and all of that and the code words. It's just, it's such idiocy, you know, for, for people who have the, the brains of 12 year olds, that all of this. Let's look at the journalistic complaint that this should be released. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update. Catch our full shows for free, live weekdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on Rumble, and join our Locals community at greenwall.locals.com for all of my written journalism, exclusive after-show Q&As, and more.